That's not the sound of any ordinary household vacuum. It's a staple within the conservation lab at the Atatiki Museum, first established in 1997. Known for exhibiting some of the most interesting artifacts from South Florida, Atatiki houses thousands of artifacts that date all the way back to the 20s and 30s. Corey Smith, one of only 15 conservationists in the state of Florida, let the Seminole Channel inside where all the magic happens. Welcome to the Conservation Lab at the Atatiki Museum. We're going to take you inside and show you some behind the scenes action here at the museum. I'm a conservator here at the Atatiki Museum. I do objects and textiles conservation, which means that I can fix, stabilize, and restore objects and textiles. Corey's job is to enhance objects and textiles and prepare them for exhibitions at the museum. So what goes into your daily routine? Let's say you start with an object, what happens? Well, when you start a uh, conservation treatment, a lot of um, time and energy goes into documentation of the condition that it is at that time. Um, you have to take photographs of all angles. You have to write physical descriptions of the condition. Followed by a treatment proposal and extensive cleaning that could take anywhere from three hours or even several months to ensure no dust or dirt is on the exhibition and surfaces don't deteriorate. This is an example of an artifact before and after when it is ready for exhibition. Visitors can actually come to the Boardwalk Loop to view the conservation lab and learn about the tools used to preserve the Seminole Tribe's history. Using vacuums and man-made cotton swabs, it's a very detail-oriented process that preserves the Seminole Tribe's living history. Our museum collection has come from for many years of acquisition or donations. Um, we have a lot of people that are, have, were here in the 30s and 40s and collected seminal artifacts who want to return it to the Seminoles. We usually wear gloves so that your fingerprints don't get onto them or dirt from, or oils from your fingers. Um, but it's wonderful to be able to hold everything and see what was there and what the history of it is behind the inside of things. What happened with this silver coin is that somebody touched it probably about five years ago without a glove on. Light plays a huge factor as well. This was a doll that they had purchased in the 1920s. It sat on a shelf in their office for 80, 90 years. And when they brought it to us, we had a wonderful example of damage. This is exactly what we're trying to prevent. Which brings us to the one place we were forbidden to shoot. This is the vault in the curatorial building where all of our artifacts are housed. Um, unfortunately, we can't take you inside because it's top security, um, but this is where everything lives. One artifact that still lives is a military jacket that will be featured in an exhibit in 2011. This jacket belonged to Isaac Hodges, who was part of the Mississippi Volunteer Infantry. Um, it dates to about 1840, um, and it's wool. So what we're going to need to do for this, not only is a surface cleaning, but there's a lot of small holes. Some of them were actually from when he wore it himself. So you can see the stitches where the soldier repaired the coat itself. Now the way I fill it is I take a piece of mylar, so it's just clear mylar, you lay it over the fill or the area of loss and outline the area that you're going to need to fill. Then what I'm using over here is a needle punched felt um, to create a fill for it of that exact size. This is just a wool fabric. Well, the plaster casts were made um, before the bronze casts were done. It's part of the process of making the bronze casting. And they've been in our collection and they've gotten a little dirty over the time. They were dirty when they came to us. So we're just making sure that the surface of them um, is gonna be as good as it possibly can. What we have here is a patchwork skirt that's gonna be in the exhibition that's opening in February um, on postcards. Now for the treatment of this, it will be a surface cleaning. I'm also testing the water solubility of all of the dyes to see if we have the possibility of doing a wet cleaning. Now under the microscope, what I'm doing is examining a lot of the stitches to make sure that they're stable and see if there are any areas of loss or, or damage that need to be um, stabilized. Corey's one of few people who get to touch the artifacts, and she says that preserving the Seminole tribe's culture is a priority for the tribe's legacy to live on. The whole purpose of the museum is to preserve the culture of the Seminole tribe and the artifacts that we have here. So there's a real personal nature with that. 